Hey, Mike, what do Kelly Slater and PT have in common? I don't know. They're both world champs? Nope. They both own Endless Summer Box Set. Oh, my God. Rad. You guys, you can get it, too. The link's in the show notes. Welcome back, everybody, of the QuiverCast. This is Mike, your host. And this is all brought to you by YourAudioLegacy.com and QuiverBuilder.com. And please check out my other podcast, The Stinky Booties, I do with my buddy, Billy. Let's roll. Hello, everyone. This is Mike here with the QuiverCast. And we have a very special guest today, all the way from the East Coast in Virginia Beach. We got Wes Lane. Junior. <laughs> I was going to ask you, do you want me to say that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, people get us confused all <laughs> <Okay>. the time. <laughs> Wes Lane Jr. So uh, let's just start right there. How do you like your name? In, oh, man. That's a big name to live up to. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yep. First off, yeah, without your dad it. even being like a famous surfer, let's just let's put that away for a second. The name itself is pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Yep. But then now you have your, your dad, who's... Anybody that surfed if any amount of time knows who your dad is. Mm -hmm. West Coast, yep. East Coast, probably all over the world. Oh, yeah. All over. Okay. So I was going to ask you, uh, is that – how does that feel to be a junior to West? Oh, man, it's, it's great, yeah. Um, being the next generation down from him and his older brother, Randy, who was also on the Pro Tour in uh, 76, I think. 77. Yeah. 1977. He did the world tour. Um, more commonly known as a, a professional jet skier. Um, but yeah, he did the world tour for uh, a good year, had a real good year actually. Um, and then my dad was on from 82 uh, full time to about uh, 89 or 90. So yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a big family. <laughs> Is it okay? Big, like big famous family. Okay. Yep. Um, so when did you recognize that your dad was known for surfing and your uncle for that matter? Like as Man, a young uh, child? Oh yeah. Even as a young child. Cause I mean, growing up, there was never any shortage of surf movies around the house, uh, be it on DVD or VHS. Um, so yeah, there was always, uh, surf movies playing around the house, pictures hanging on the wall. So yeah, I, I knew exactly who I came from. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Let's just start from the beginning. What's your first memory of surfing? Oh, wow. So my earliest memory of surfing um, would be about two at the time. Um, being that young, obviously, I couldn't ride on a board myself. So my, I would hang on to my dad's back while he would ride a long board or something in like the eight, nine foot range. He would catch the wave and then sling me around onto the front of the board. And I would ride on the front and I'd be yelling at him to slow down and... <laughs> yelling at him, slow down, slow down. He's like, we're as slow as we can go. And he would just go down the line and probably speed up even more, no matter how many times I told him to slow down. But, <laughs> but yeah, it was, uh, I got started real early. Um, my first time surfing though, uh, I was probably about a year old was actually at Lani Akea in Hawaii. Uh, my dad would throw me onto the front of, uh, his older brother, Randy's longboard pushed me into a wave in the shore break and ran would catch me on the inside. Uh, but obviously I don't remember that, but yeah, that was, that would have been my first time surfing. Okay. What year were you born? I was born in 99. I'm uh 23. Okay. You're 23. So your dad was off tour for a while at that point. Yeah. Yeah. He had been off tour for a few years then he was still doing a lot of pro contests, but, um, as such as the ASP East, uh, and a lot of the bud tour events, but, uh, yeah, as for the, World Tour, he was uh, off by then. So, um, how much time do you guys spend in Hawaii? It sounds like you guys, at least when you're young, you went a lot. Yeah, so I went when I was young a lot. And then uh, about six years ago, we uh, got back into the habit of going every year. We uh, go out for about three weeks every year from uh, the end of December into January. Um, we stay with a friend uh, right there on the Haleiwa side of the cliff at Waimea Bay. Um, he's actually got the... Uh, surf line camera on the roof of his house. So whenever you flip that camera on, uh, that's 
that's our view from the house we're staying at. So we got it. Rad. We got it pretty good over there for those few weeks. That's so rad. So let's 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 start here then. Um, I go on your Instagram. I'm looking for your dad. And I come across you, but the pictures is is why man. I figured that's your mm-hmm. dad. Then I go and find out it's you charging why yep. man. Yeah, uh, first time I surfed Waimea was uh, winter of 2016. I was 17 at the time. Wow. Um, I'd just gotten my first real gun built from Channel Islands. It was a 9.8. I've actually still got it. Um, but, yeah, that was my first time being out there since I was 12. And that was really my first time in big surf. That year, we actually got it really good. We surfed Waimea a few times. I got a couple of really big days at sunset. Um, and then we, on all the smaller days, we were surfing V land pipe back door off the wall, that whole stretch. Um, but yeah, I got hooked on surfing Waimea really my, after my first time out there, it was actually the first day of the trip. I remember it really clearly. It was kind of a smaller day by Waimea standards. Uh, it was really clean about 15 feet. Um, we checked it in the morning and it was breaking right there on the boil. So we decided to go out. We were the only ones out for a few hours. And wow. I, I still remember the first wave I ever got there. I, it was a smaller one. I caught it out on the boil. It reformed really perfectly when it got into pinballs. And from that point on, I was hooked on that wave. I, it's still one of my favorite waves, if not my favorite wave in the world, uh, when it's not crowded. When it's not crowded. That, it yep. probably crowded. How did you guys score it? It was just random, like the right time, right? Like the, like an hour from Empty yeah, it was totally random. We just uh, we were checking spots the first morning, and uh, it was everywhere was good that day. Pipe was good, sunset was really good. Um, but I had been wanting to surf Waimea for years, so it, I was pretty eager to get out there, uh, especially on a day like that when it was pretty mellow and easy by Waimea standards. Yeah. So, what was your did your dad talk to you about it beforehand? Yeah. So we, we paddled out. Um, he showed me the whole lineup, uh, where to get in, where to get out on a day like that. You can really jump in and get out with your hair dry, no matter how you time it. But, uh, he explained like how to time it, where to go, uh, even on big days, um, which way the current's going to be going, uh, how the reef is set up, really everything I need to know. So yeah, pretty much every time we go out to any spot, he, he knows the reef and the lineup pretty well. So, uh, he always explains it really well before we go out, just so I know exactly what to do, uh, no matter whether or not if I get into a good or bad situation. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's been good. Uh, we've been going out to Hawaii every year now. This year, we actually really scored. We got, I think we surfed Waimea probably 12 or 13 wow. sessions that whole trip over wow. the course of about three and a half, four weeks. Uh, and we surfed Makaha a lot. That was a, That's another one of my favorite waves. But, um, yeah, we scored that really big and really clean, probably three or four days. But, yeah, we always – it seems like we always get too lucky when we go out there. One of these one of these years, I feel like we're going to get skunked. <laughs> okay, so I have a lot of questions about that. Okay. Yeah. You were stoked to go to Wyoming. man. Coming from Virginia yep. Beach, like there's nothing comparable from Virginia Beach or East Coast even in your mm-hmm. general area that even – is there okay? I should ask the question. Is there a wave that's even remotely similar? Oh, there's there's plenty of big waves out here. Uh, the problem is most people don't know about them, and the people that do know how know about them uh, either don't know how to get to them or don't want any part of it. Um, especially once you get farther north uh, into New England, um, once you get into Canada, there's a lot of really big spots in Nova Scotia. But once you get up north, you start getting. Uh, more into reefs, point breaks, rocks. So there's a lot more opportunity up there for big surf. But every time, uh, every year when there's a good hurricane and a storm lines up well, we're we're always racing up there to Newport in in, uh, Rhode Island. And uh, there's a couple of pretty big spots up there. But some of the spots can be pretty fickle. They they can be hard to get. But whenever there's swell or there's a big storm, that whole area lights up like a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything in the local region by your house? Let's say no. I mean, miles? we're we're all surrounded by sandbars uh, from really New Jersey south uh, about there. But down here, yeah, it's all sandbars. So even when there's swell and it's it gets bigger, like eight, ten feet, um, it's usually too windy, too blown out, and uh, just kind of washing through everywhere. So really, 
doesn't get good until it's in, you know, the five to six foot range or smaller. Okay. And it gets pretty good though, right? Kind of like. Yeah. Oh yeah. We get, peaky we get plenty of good days, especially being close to the outer banks and Cape Hatteras. There's always good sandbars down there. Um, so that's really, that's really always been the kind of the pride of the East coast was the outer banks. Yeah, 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 for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, let's just talk about Virginia beach a little bit and then we'll go back to Hawaii. Yeah. In Virginia beach. So I've been there. A lot of the beach is like, well, at the time of year, I was kind of not the right time to surf, but does it get like, is there people surfing all throughout the beach? Are they all hanging out like first street jetty? Yeah. There's a couple spots are that are down designated as uh, surfing areas only. So first street, um, fifth street, Croatan, oh. um, which Croatan is on the South side of the inlet. Um, right next to first street, but yeah, those are all surfing areas. Um, other than that, all the other sandbars, uh, you can only surf before nine thirty and then after five o'clock, um, which uh, okay. really oh, first yeah. street and Croatan are the two main spots. The pier also gets good. Um, but that's also a swimming area. So really you can only surf there early in the morning or late in the afternoon. And are you, uh, are you stoked on Virginia beach? I mean, are you going oh, yeah. to get a little older? I, and move, are you going to move to Hawaii? Oh, no, I, I plan on staying here. Yeah, I, I love Virginia Beach. Um, I grew up right here in Croatan, so I've surfed there my whole life. Uh, even mm-hmm. when it's good or bad, um, I've always liked that sandbar, the way it's set up, um, the way the sand forms off the jetty. 90% of the time, you can go out and find a fun wave. Okay. So East Coast is known for small waves, but yep, is that just more of a wives' tale? Uh, always- no, generally the East coast is known for small waves. Um, right. like I said, until you start getting into the new England, uh, Southern Canada area where you've got rocks, reefs, point breaks. Um, other than that, yeah, the East coast is generally small. Okay. But fun, but fun. Yeah. Good shape. Okay. But, uh, yeah, it can be small a lot of times. And how often are you making a trip to the outer banks or going North going up towards yeah. new England? So from the Outer Banks, we're about an hour and a half to two hours, depending on where exactly you're going mm-hmm. uh, and how fast you're driving. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, the Outer Banks gets good plenty. Um, I'll go down there every every other month or so. Yeah, it, it really just depends on how the storms line up. Um, this time of year, this is the smallest time of year for the East Coast, spring and summer. We get all of our surf and all of our storms in the fall and winter time. So that's mainly when a lot of guys are making the trek down there and up north uh, to the New England area. Now, what about the water temperature? What's the water temperature in your area? Is it Cal- oh, similar right. to California? Oh, right now it's great. Where it's uh, about seventy-five to eighty uh, in the summertime, but in the wintertime it, it gets pretty cold. It's in the it gets down to the thirties, but does it? We kind of wow. get a little bit of everything around here on the water temperature. We get the good and the bad. <laughs> so when it's hitting thirty, are you going out? Oh yeah. Plenty of guys no are going way. out, and you just got to have a good wetsuit. No way. Yep. Uh, no way. Okay. And how much are you surfing? Um, depends on the time of the year. Um, when you got to put on a five millimeter suit, boots, <laughs> gloves, and a hood, I'm not going out as much. But when all you got to do is throw on a pair of trunks, I'm going a few times a week. But yeah, when you got to start putting all that rubber on and going out in the bitter cold, I'm going probably once a week, once every other week. Really? Okay. Yep. And that's just due to the straight being cold. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How far back from the beach do you live? Uh, so we're about a block and a half back. So we've always oh. been really close and we're close to the jetty where uh, the sandbar is usually best. So yeah, we've got a pretty good. Rad. Okay. So, I mean, worst case scenario, you're getting your wetsuit in the house. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Always getting your wetsuit in the house where it's 70 degrees. <laughs> Right, you're not hitting the parking yeah. lot and changing. Yeah, throw your boots and gloves in front of the vent, t- crank the heat, um, get them warmed up before you put them on. But yeah, really okay. And now, when it's that cold, are you finding someone to paddle out with you? Or are you paddling up you and your dad, or just you by yourself, or what's? Oh yeah, my, uh, my dad and I surf all the time. My dad's still surfing uh, just about as much as I am. Um, we surfed yesterday morning. Actually, we had some really good surf here. Uh, it was probably one of the better days we've had in a while. Um, we surfed right out front of Croatan. Um, sandbar is really good there right now. But, uh, yeah, we're both still getting out um, a few times a week. 
Do you practice? So now we're now we're in Virginia Beach. I, I want to talk about, about a little a little bit about Virginia Beach. Virginia mm-hmm. Beach has a lot of surf shops. Oh yeah, plenty of surf shops, big surf shops too. Yeah. Um, both my dad and I work for Coastal Edge. There's uh, six locations. Um, my dad works as one of the general managers and the buyers, so he oversees most all the stores. And then mm-hmm. I work at the main location, which is on 21st Street. Okay. Tell us a little about your shop if you want. Yeah. So, um, like I said, we've got six locations. Um, I work at the main location, which is a 10,000 square foot store. Wow. Um, it's all surf apparel, uh, surf and skate products. But yeah. It's, uh, it's been a great season so far. We just got through 4th of July. So it's, we're kind of in full season now it's cranking. Okay. A couple questions about the surf industry, by the way. I mean, these just came up. At your shop, are you selling a lot of boards? Or are you selling mostly like trunks and like for the oh, tourists? It's, it, it's really a lot of everything. Uh, okay. A lot of apparel, a um, lot of surf and skate products. We carry a lot of boards from Channel Islands, Lost, Catch Surf, all the main brands. Mm, um, okay. So yeah, we're we're fortunate enough to have kind of a lot of everything. And are these like, do you get a lot of tourists coming in buying boards and they're here for a week or two and they want to learn how to surf? Are they renting? Oh boards? yeah, yep. Um, we get. A lot of tourists in Virginia Beach this time of year. Um, that's where a lot of our the city's revenue comes from is tourism. But yeah, we get plenty of people coming into the shop uh, looking for boards. Um, we also run a surf camp, my dad and I, through the oh, summer okay. right there at First Street, um, Wesleyan Surf Camp. So yeah, we're also really busy with that throughout the summer. Um, we are in the middle of our third week right now. Um, we go 12 weeks throughout the summer from uh, middle of June to beginning of September. Oh, sweet. Is there a website or anything for that or Instagram? Or yeah, yeah. Wesley, uh, WesleyanSurfCamp.com. Um, we're also on Instagram. It's Wesleyan Surf Camp. Okay, we'll put those in the show notes. Yeah. That'll be cool. Who's who, who's your clients? Is, are these mostly local kids? Are they tourists or is it 50-50 or how, how's that break So down? Um, we do all ages. We get kids from, you know, as young as four or five years old to sometimes we'll be getting grandparents. Um <laughs> So it's pretty cool. We got are these people that live you know hundreds of miles inland or from let's say I don't know Philadelphia or something. They come in to visit for a week. Yeah, we get a lot of kids um, that are repeat campers. Um, we get a lot of oh. people from Virginia Beach, Norfolk, Chesapeake area, um, but we get a lot of kids that are traveling uh, here on vacation with their families from middle of the U.S. and they've never seen the ocean before. So it's it's pretty wow. special for them um, and uh, some pretty good memories. Yeah, for sure. How do you like uh, teaching surfing? Oh, man, teaching it's a blast, Uh, especially when the kids are really into it. Uh, Yeah, nothing beats it. All right. In Virginia, like how many guys are surfing locally? It depends on the day, really. Um, There's a really big surf community in Virginia Beach um, with all the shops. Uh, There's a lot of uh, reps for all the main companies. So there's a really uh, big surf community culture here in Virginia Beach. Um, we've got a lot of big contests such as uh, ECSE that uh, Vans and Coastal Edge help put on. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the surf industry is booming here, uh, especially in the last, you know, 10, 15 years. Compared to other cities in, on the East Coast, where do you guys sit? Are you guys like the Huntington Beach or I mean, where are you comparable? You know, in, in terms of competition, community? yeah. I mean, really Virginia Beach is the Huntington beach of the East coast, um, have an ECSE that's really side by side with the U S open when you look at the size of it and, uh, all the people traveling for it. So it's really special having an event like that here in our hometown. Um, we've got a lot of other contests. We've got a big ESA district, uh, Eastern surfing association. Um, then there'll be very other, various other contests like shoot the pier, which we just finished up at the 15th street pier here in Virginia beach. Um, the Steel Pier Classic, which is held at First Street, which is the same place as ECSE. So, yeah, okay. it's it's really special having not just that many contests, but that many big contests here that bring in such a huge traveling crowd from all over the world. You're right on. What's your favorite wave in the East Coast? Ooh. Yeah. Favorite wave on the East Coast definitely has to be a spot called Ruggles in Newport, Rhode Island. Oh, yeah. Um, it's this. Yeah, it's this big right-handed point break. Um, it can handle surf of really any size from about six feet and up. 
Um, and there's a couple other waves up there in Newport that I've been wanting to get for a long time, but are pretty fickle and hard to get. But when they're, when they're on, they're on, they're heavy. Um, especially some of the outer reefs, but yeah, hands down Ruggles is my favorite wave on the East coast. Um, every time there's a storm that's looking like it's on a good track, my dad and I are have our eyes glued to the computer all day long, looking at the track, comparing it to tracks from previous storms and how this one's going to line up. And we just keep all of our boards and all our gear ready just to throw it in the truck at any time and race up there just to surf for, even if it's one day and then race back to Virginia beach, um, it, it's that good of a wave and it's worth it. Wow. Okay. And then are you guys able to ditch work if the waves are good or how does that work? Are you committed mm-hmm. if you have a schedule shift? Oh yeah. Uh, we're lucky. We've got, uh, uh, we've got a somewhat flexible schedule so we can, uh, it's not, it's never really hard to get out of work for a couple of days, race up there and then race back. So oh, rad. yeah, we're, we're really fortunate with our setup. Okay. And then what's like localism in, in Virginia beach? Is there localism? Are you going to get harassed? If you paddle out? Uh, you know, the localism in Virginia beach, it used to be really gnarly and it's, it's mellowed out a lot over the years. Um, okay. first street, which is one of the main surfing spots here in Virginia beach, uh, used to have a strict pecking order. Right. Um, Grom sat at the back of the line, uh, got hazed, got their boards pushed into the inlet. Um, it was, it was full on. And then, you know, in the about 10, 15 years back is when things started mellowing out. Um, a lot of those guys that kind of ran the lineup were getting older. They had kids, they weren't surfing as much. Um, so I mean the, the number of people surfing, uh, the spot like that really hasn't changed. It's just, uh, a different type of crowd there. Now it's, a lot mellower. Um, no one's going to yell at you most of the time, um, unless you do something really stupid. But yeah, if you if you fall out of line, you can still get yelled at. So yeah, there's a, a d- decent level of localism here, um, but it's certainly mellowed out a lot over the last couple of decades. So is it like lo- localism, like as in I'm from California, you, you can't surf here, or is it more just respectful? A little of both. Um, if you weren't one of the guys and no one knew who you were, you were probably going to get heckled. Um, okay. But yeah, there was a, a pretty tight lineup in those days. Um, guys like my dad, Jason Bort, um, too many others to name, really. Uh, but yeah, there's yeah, been a, yeah. a lot of uh, really good surfers coming out of Virginia Beach, especially in that era, you know, in the 80s 90s early 2000s um there's really an explosion of talent um like i said you have guys like jason board jeff myers um ian parnell those are the first to come to name or come to mind uh talking about that era so yeah there's uh been no shortage of talent coming from virginia beach um especially having you know small sandbars to surf on all the time um it's been a good crop of talent even nowadays okay and did you, did you surf contests at all? And I know you surfed the Oakley when I saw the picture. Which is yeah, funny. yeah. I still do as many contests as I can. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I uh, finished third in the Shoot the Pier uh, last weekend, actually. Um, okay. Third in Pro Shoreboard. Um, Bo Rayner from the Outer Banks won. Um, you probably know who his dad is, Scooter Rayner. I, I know the name, yeah. Yep, yeah. So Bo is his son. Bo is a great surfer. Um, he's about my age, but uh, yeah, he does a lot of contests, but... Yeah, I'm still doing as many contests as I can. I'm not traveling as much for contests as much as I used to. I mainly just do the ones here in Virginia Beach and then mm-hmm. occasionally a couple in the Outer Banks. What do you feel about contests? Do you like doing them? Oh, I love doing contests. Yeah, Dude. I got I started doing contests when I was young, like eight or nine, and I got I got hooked on them. I've always been – I've always had a moderate level of competitiveness, um, just enough to where it would help me, but not so much where it's crippling me. So I've always been – super hooked on doing contests um especially the ones i can do well in <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> which ones are those like is there uh, certain areas or something is that what you mean yeah i mean the the local contests here in virginia beach um i've had a pretty good run with those i did okay. the esa for a long time um okay had a few good years in there um Finished well in the Shoot the Pier a couple of times. I did well in the Steel Pier Classic this year. Um, 
done well in ECSE a few years on the amateur side. Um, haven't finished that well on the pro side in that contest, but yeah, I still love doing contests every year as much as I can. In those contests, and you don't have to answer this, but I, I, I got to know, you have the name Wes Lane. Do you, do you feel like you have to live up to that name or are you yourself? No, Is I mean, that- I've always been, I've always been pretty comfortable with it. Um, okay. I've always kind of just done my own thing uh, in okay. contests. Uh, my dad's always right there coaching me, telling me where to go, what strategy to use, um, what board to ride. So yeah, I've kind of always had him by my side uh, in the competitive scene. So I've been pretty fortunate. Kids approach it a different way. And my son surfs too. So he's 21. So he's similar mm-hmm. to your age. Um, sometimes he wouldn't listen to me. <laughs> Did you ever have that where you're like, Oh yeah. I mean, every, every kid goes through okay. the phase of, Oh, they don't want to listen to mom or dad, but um, <laughs> they know what board to ride or they know yeah, they, where to sit. They know it all, heat. but it, it's, it's just one of those phases you outgrow. Um, I know I certainly went through it for a period of time, but yeah, I mean, my dad was always great in the competitive scene. Um, he never put too much pressure on me. That's really the thing I notice with a lot of kids is a lot of times the parents put too much pressure on them and then they'll get burned out after a certain period of time. They're like, man, screw this. I don't want to do this anymore. Let me ask you this. Have you ever in an open, open division surfed against your dad? Yeah, I actually surfed in a pro <laughs> final with him one year at uh, All right, was a that? contest here in Virginia Beach called uh, Surf for the Cure, which is put on by Coastal Edge. Okay. Um, there was a pro division. Me and him both ended up in the final, and he beat me. This was uh, <laughs> yes. two or three years ago, actually. Okay. Yeah, probably two How years hard ago. were you trying? Were you trying well, to beat I, him? I, want, I wanted to beat him so bad. But, <laughs> yeah, he just – every wave came right to him, and, yeah, he, he got the scores, and – yeah, he took it. <laughs> <laughs> was there resentment or anything, or was it just all? Lost? Oh no, it, it, it was. Good? It was. We were all laughing about it. It was. It was a oh, cool. pretty intense uh, awards presentation, <laughs> but yeah, it, it was really cool. We were both <laughs> laughing about it. That's rad. That's fun. All right. Um, okay, so now you, you your experience in Hawaii is pretty good. Mm-hmm. How how you getting how you treated in Hawaii? Like, are you? Well, so, I think in your dad's time it changed between now and then. Yeah, I mean, my earliest memories of wanting to surf big waves was in 2005. Will Scooten, who's a professional surfer, uh, made a movie called Head First. Uh, mm. I was six years old when it came out. Um, up until that time, every surf movie I'd watched. Uh, had all this great footage, great surfers. But when Head First came out, that was the first movie I'd seen where it had killer footage, killer soundtrack. Most of the guys in it I knew and had incredible footage from Toto Santos, Waimea, Puerto Escondido, and seeing guys like my dad, Will Scooten, his brother Cliff Scooten, uh, Mark Healy, all guys that I knew surfing these big waves, I wanted to be like them and I wanted to do exactly what they were doing. And the funny Mm. thing is watching that movie as a kid, all that footage from Waimea, Todos, Escondido, that never even phased me. I looked at that and I was like, Oh, I'll never surf waves like that. Uh, it didn't even scare me. The part that really got me fired up to surf big waves was the Cape Hatteras footage where it was, you know, six, eight feet. That's what really scared me because that, was a little more realistic to me, which was kind of funny, but yeah, watching that movie growing up, mm-hmm. seeing all guys I knew, um, charging and getting huge barrels. That's what really made me want to surf big waves, uh, from a young age. So will, if you're listening, great job on the movie. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, ever since then I, I wanted to surf big waves and, uh, that was kind of what fueled me wanting to, surf Waimea when I first started going over there at consistently at 17 years old. Um, but yeah, as soon as, as soon as I surfed Waimea a few times, uh, Makaha sunset, I was fully hooked on surfing big waves. Okay. What's your favorite wave there? Ooh, you know, when we're over there on the small days, we're surfing V land a lot, um, off the wall, Haleiwa, that whole stretch. Mm-hmm. But when it gets really big, 
Waimea and Maikaha are definitely my two favorite waves. Okay. Um, really depends on the size, though, uh, and the crowd. When Waimea is really big and really perfect, it's a, there's a big crowd out there, and a lot of guys out there, you know, aren't as experienced as they should be. Um, really? A lot of the guys that have surfed Waimea for a long time will attest to that. I mean, when it's big and good, there's still plenty of great surfers out there, but out of the 70 guys in the lineup, maybe 20 of them are going to want the sets. And then 10 of those guys are going to pull back Mm -hmm. and then maybe less than 10 would actually go. So there's a lot of people out there in the lineup on a big day that don't really have the experience and are doing things that are putting themselves and other people in danger, which, you know, a lot of guys that have been surfing Waimea for decades a lot of them don't surf there anymore for that very reason which is kind of sad when you look at it but but yeah for sure Waimea is always going to be one of my favorite waves um Makaha as well I love that wave um that's a much more uh localized wave um every time you paddle out there you're going to see the same 20 or 30 guys um so there's not as much of a a crowd over there on the west side which is great because you can escape the uh, sometimes chaos that is at the North Shore. You mentioned Sunset too earlier. Yeah, Sunset's sunset? another one of my favorite waves. Um, it's a lot of water. Yeah, it's a lot of water. That to me is the hardest wave on the North Shore because there's waves breaking in so many different places. Um, you can think you're all the way out past the lineup and then you can get clocked by a giant set. So it's <laughs> It's really difficult, but that's one of my favorite things about it. Um, Because, yeah, to get to get a good one out there, it takes a lot of time spent out there learning the lineup. Because there's a lot of lot of stuff going on. Um, I remember my first time ever surfing out there was when I was 17. My dad and I paddled out. It was really good, really clean, but it was big, and I was so freaked out because there were waves breaking in so many different places. And I remember Michael Tronic paddling up by me going, a lot going on out here, huh? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are these some of your dad's friends that they, they oh, know yeah. you um, before you? Michael Tronic did all right? the pro contests back in the day. Um, he's got Free Surf Magazine now, which is one of the last remaining surf publications um, that are that's in print. But, yep. yeah, he's a longtime friend of my dad's. Um, that was actually the first time I'd met him. Oh, Okay. So, but did he know you were Wes's? You oh, were yeah. West? Yeah. I had met him uh, earlier that day before we paddled out. Okay. Do you feel like you have an advantage with your dad getting a little more knowledge in Hawaii? Oh, yeah. Especially going over to Hawaii, um, having him as a tour guide, showing me all the spots, all the lineups, um, introducing me to all the guys that, you know, essentially run the lineup out there. <laughs> so, yeah, I've, uh, I've gained a lot of good connections yes. from him out there. Uh, so yeah, there's never, never a <laughs> shortage rad. of people to meet out there. Um, yeah, it's been great having him as a tour guide showing me everything out there. Yeah. That's super awesome. Any, th- any other travels you've been to around the world? Not recently. Um, been to California, but, okay. uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. the main surf trips, those are going up to Newport, Rhode Island or Hawaii. Those are, kind of the big trips of the year. So anywhere you'd want to go that you're like looking like in the future, I want to go to Bali or or wherever, Portugal. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, any trips that I would really like to get would be spots. I haven't already gotten. Um, I'd love to get Totos one of these days. Uh, I'd love to get uh, this other way Mm. called the ledge up in Newport, Rhode Island, which is, um, a really fickle outer mm-hmm. reef about three miles off the coast of Newport. Um, my dad got it once back in 2003 with uh, Will Scooten, Mark Healy, John Bilderback, and uh, my dad's brother, Ran. Um, they got it big, clean, and perfect. There was actually a, a, a few-page article in Surfer Magazine. It was uh, October mm-hmm. 2003. Wow. But, yeah, that's a spot I've right been on. wanting to get for a really long time. What kind of boards are you riding? Are you riding all kinds of different equipment? Are you riding strictly shortboard? 
Yeah, mostly just short boards. I've been getting most all my boards from Channel Islands for the last few years. Um, but yeah. I mean, all my boards are ranging from, yeah. you know, my short boards are 5.11 to 6.2. Um, and then all my step ups and guns are from 9.8 up to 10.6. And you're not like ever riding fishes or you riding longboards, especially like being smaller in the summer and stuff? You switch it up? You know, right? I used to I used to ride longboards in contests quite a bit, but I've kind of gotten out of it as I've gotten older. But I've never gotten into like the whole fish, mid-length, um, any of that other kind of stuff. I've always just stuck to traditional shortboards. That's what I've always ridden, what I've always liked. Once I start mm-hmm. going into those different kind of like novelty shapes, I, I can't ride them. Um, if I'm going to go out and surf, I want to, I want to ride something that I'm going to have fun on and I can uh, do a turn yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right on. Yeah. But you see guys like, uh, well, I'm not comparing, but like, I don't know. You see these retired pros like Josh Kerr or something, riding These fish and they're just killing it. Oh yeah. Um, There's some guys that can ride any kind of board and make anything look good, but yeah, I don't know. I've never just, I've never gotten the hang of those kind of novelty shapes. Um, yeah, no, I get it. Kind of just one of those things, you either have it or you don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right on. And then what about, um, do you have any other hobbies besides surfing? Yeah, so uh gotten back into playing golf. I hmm. kind of took a few years off from that. I wasn't really into it as much, but I've gotten back into it more recently. Um, I skated for a long time. I kind of gotten out of that but i'm getting a little more back into it um i skated vert a lot um yeah surfing's always been kind of my main thing that's uh always been my main hobby the thing to keep me busy now you work at the surf shop do you have a certain shaper like are you getting channel islands or were you getting variety of boards are you getting lost yeah i mean really um you riding I've, mostly i've had a couple of lost but yeah pretty much everything i've ordered has been from channel islands um Every board I've gotten from them has just mm. gone perfectly. So I've never really like ventured out into getting anything else because I, I know whatever I get from those guys is gonna be a it's gonna work great for me. Um especially especially when I get into like ordering like boards for bigger waves, like my guns I'm really particular about. Um I if I fall, I don't want it to be because of my board. I want it to be because I made a mistake or I went on a wave I shouldn't mm-hmm. have. Um, so yeah, I put a lot of trust and uh, specifications into my guns. And I know Channel Islands, they make some really great ones. They just came out with a new one um, that I'm actually getting built right now that Peter Mel designed, which everybody's been saying great stuff about. Mm-hmm. My dad actually just got two of them and um, mine's still getting worked on, but yeah, his felt great. So I, yeah, I'm itching to get mine. What 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 motivates you like to uh, on those cold days? How do you, how do you get the motivation to get? In the oh, it's, man, it's it's hard to find the motivation on the cold days, <laughs> yeah. especially when it's windy and bitterly cold. Um, yeah, it, it really just has to be a good sandbar, um, a good swell direction, uh, and a warm suit. <laughs> mm-hmm. that's, that's really the the main motivation you're getting on days like that. <laughs> So on the West Coast here, they're doing, they're starting surf clubs. All the mm-hmm. cities are kind of getting them, and there's some some starting to, in the East Coast. Are you guys involved in that? The board yeah. Riders? So uh, there's uh, some guys are working on getting a board riders club started up um, here in the Mid Atlantic, um, but it's kind of yes. in the works right now. But yeah, I mean, there's places all over the world doing the board riders clubs. I know there's. Uh, some big ones in Australia that have been around for decades, but yep. yeah, the board riders clubs, that's really been kind of blowing up, especially here in the U S on the West coast. And yeah. it's kind of starting to grow over here on the East coast, but yeah, there's a lot of potential for that. And I'm excited to see where that goes. Yeah. 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 I hope you guys get one. It's super fun. Yeah. Now, are you watching WSL contest? Yeah. It depends on the contest, but yeah, I'm watching a lot of the WSL events. Um, I don't watch as much as the earlier rounds. I'm kind of just uh, sticking to the finals or whatever heats Kelly's in. <laughs> I don't watch as much as the, uh, much as sorry. I don't watch as much of the earlier rounds. Um, I mainly just watch the later rounds, like the finals, okay. semifinals, or whatever heat Kelly's in. <laughs> okay. Are you, are you, so are you a Kelly fan? 
Oh yeah, I'm a big Kelly fan. Uh, Kelly, John Florence, um, those are definitely my two favorite guys on tour right now. I love watching Zeke Lau, um, Jack Robinson, like him. Um, yeah, I really like the guys with a lot of style and power. Okay, so you for, you're looking at the guys on the bigger waves that can yeah, really show. Yep. Not yeah, the, like, not the Felipe's. I like Felipe, um, but yeah, those four guys those are probably my top four, uh, mm-hmm. top four favorites. But I like guys that surf with a lot of style, power, and versatility yeah. that can surf knee high waves or double overhead waves and still be one of the top guys out there. For sure, yeah, for sure. You have any goals in your surfing, or are you now? It's just now that you're kind of maturing, you're getting a little older. Just to keep surfing, like, do you have plans? Yeah, I mean, I'm still doing as many contests as I can. Um, I'm still in college. I go to Old Dominion University. So, yeah, okay. school and work, that takes up a lot of my time. Yeah, um, for sure. But, yeah, I'm still doing as many contests as I can. That's the main goal, just is to have fun, really. Yeah, so, I mean, that's what contest is for you, right, though? It's not yep. – it's nothing but fun? Yeah, contests have always been – a lot of fun for me. Um, I never really let, serious. I take it seriously, but I never let myself really fall under a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> once you start letting the pressure build up and weigh down on you, then it's going to slow you down. You're not going to be surfing as well. You're not going to be having as much fun, which I see a lot of people, uh, kind of evolve generations that has kind of happened to, um, some people more than others though, but yeah, the, and a lot of it will come from parents. I've noticed, uh, Mm -hmm. some parents will put too much pressure on their kids to perform and do well. And it, they get burned out. It doesn't become fun for them anymore. Um, so yeah, I I never really let myself get buried under a lot of pressure, especially with contests because I wanted to keep doing them and I wanted them to be fun. Yeah. Yeah. And then you said your uncle, uh, Randy, right? Lives yep. out in Carlsbad? Yeah, he's out there in Carlsbad. He's still surfing and jet skiing all the time. Uh, he's actually about to turn 71 this year. Wow. Um, so, yeah, the fact that he's doing that at this age is pretty incredible. That is incredible. And um, you guys ever come out and stay with him and just surf around here? Yeah, we haven't been out there in a couple of years. But, um, yeah, last time we were out there, uh, we surfed Rincon, Oceanside, um, that whole stretch a bunch. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun yeah oceanside yeah. is real similar to virginia beach maybe a little bigger in the ways but yeah it's just beach breaks and piers and jetties yeah basically actually the whole area all right and how's your golf game <laughs> uh it's been better <laughs> yeah it's uh slowly improving <laughs> but yeah it's uh I'm, I'm doing all right i'm hanging in there <laughs> right on yeah okay Anything about the history of Virginia Beach? Who are the the guys? When did do you know when like surfing kind of took off there? So surfing really started to take off uh, in the '60s when ECS was brought to Virginia Beach, um, thanks yeah. to guys like Pete Smith, Bob Holland, uh, Butch Maloney, that whole crew. The they were responsible for helping bring the event from Gilgo Beach up in New York down here to Virginia Beach um, because yeah. of the warmer water. Um, so the surfing scene here really started to blow up then. Um, and ever since then there's been, uh, a lot of growth and a lot of talented surfers coming out of here. Right on. I thank you so much for doing this, man. I really, really appreciate it. I really yeah, appreciate man. it. Man. Thank you for having us. Thanks everybody for listening. Please follow us on Instagram and follow us on your favorite podcast platform. Give us five stars. If you listen to us on Apple And do me a favor and tell a friend that Quivercast is back. I'd like to thank Blue Factory and Dave Hegstrom for the music. And I'll see you all in the lineup.
Hey, you guys. Endless Summer box set. This thing is legit. It's authentic. Numbered certificate in it. It has a five-frame film strip. From the original print, you will literally own a piece of history. It has a specially minted bronze medallion. Dude, that thing's sick. Okay, there's so much more here. Go to the show notes. There's a link on there. Go check this piece of history out. This thing's rad. Seriously. Smithsonian American History Museum has it. It took four years of research with 3.5 in production. All hand assembled. This thing's rad. So much to this awesome box set. Remastered DVD. Sharper images than the original film. But dude, this thing's so sick. Link in the show notes.